Hey everybody, it's James here at In Home Golf, and we're taking time here during the COVID lockdown to renovate the showroom, which brings me to today's topic, which is room size. I get a lot of questions about what's ideal for rooms and what you can do if you don't have enough space. And if you've watched my videos, you'll know that I like the 10, 15, 25 rule, which is ideal for new builds. But if you're retrofitting or shoehorning simulators into a smaller space, there's a couple of things you gotta watch out for. In this room, we've got 15 feet wide, but turns out we have a bulkhead, and these things always cause problems. This bulkhead at 10 inches off the wall doesn't reduce your width by from 15 inches to 14.2. It's more like 13.4. Let me explain why. Most simulator companies want to track the ball down the center line of the room. There are ways to play offset, but generally what you're trying to do is maximize the screen size and then be able to hit to the center, and that's where the ball is going to enter the virtual world. But what that means is if you want to have left-handed players and right-handed players play together at the same time, you've got to have equal amounts of distance or at least full clearance on both sides of the center line. Now, most golfers, when they play with their driver, which is the longest club, have a swing plane of about 45 degrees, which means your vertical clearance is going to be the same as your horizontal clearance. A lot of people tend to think of height as the most important dimension, but with the driver, width of the room is equally important. In fact, it's exactly equally important. So this room has an outside width of 15 feet, which matches my 10, 15, 25 rule, giving each person on each side seven foot six inches of clearance. Now the average person of 5'10 or six foot tall is gonna need about six and a half feet clearance to swing comfortably. This room with this bulkhead now is smaller than 15 feet. It would be easy here to say, well, 15 feet minus your 10 inches, James, gives you 14.2, except that you're not recentering the strike mat on the 14.2, which if you did would work great. In this case, what we're trying to do is maximize the width of the screen, keeping the screen at the 15 foot dimension, which means your effective distance here from the bulkhead to the center of the strike mat is 6.8 which makes the effective width of the room actually 13.4. It makes it a little bit tight. The right thing to do here would be to move this strike mat over to center it on the 14.2 dimension. Okay, so now let's take a look at a couple of other rooms that we've built recently that had similar challenges. Here's an example of a room that I originally said I didn't want to build. The ceiling height was eight foot, eight inches tall, which is less than ideal. But the real problem are these massive bulkheads that cut across both the top left and the top right of the simulator bay, which is exactly where the highest part of your golf swing is. The effective height here is seven foot 11. So my initial instinct was it can't be done. The client, however, assured me that he could swing a club. And at the end of the day, the functional reality is if you can swing a club, there's no reason why you couldn't do it. The good news is the center part, which was eight foot eight, was tall enough almost to hang a Unicor system. Unicor has a minimum nine foot height. So what we did is we actually cut into the ceiling and mounted it higher than eight, eight. We got it to nine feet and it works great. Let me show you. Here's the room exactly as we had it planned. You'll notice that the ceiling is unfinished, allowing us for easy access to mount the Unicor in between the floor joists above. The first shot on your new simulator. Okay, that wasn't a driver, but he can swing a driver in this space. And here's one more where the ceiling height was eight foot seven inches, again with the unicorn. So we tried the inset into the joist one more time and it worked out. Here's what it looks like.
you can actually see here the unicorn inset into the hole that has been painted black on the inside, so it just disappears. I'm filming this, Rob. This is uh, like first hole here. On the course right now. Oh, get down the hole. This Beauty. is absolutely fantastic, James. Wow. Amazing job. Thank you. Thanks, man. I'm thrilled. So if your room is less than ideal, there are no guarantees that we can make it work. We don't have a wall stretcher, but there are some workarounds to some problems. Give us a call and I'll show you what we can do.